Welcome to Will It Work. I'm Kevin. Today we're looking at the Hanamex TVG 3000. I don't know. 1978 was just a weird time for gaming. There were a lot of companies coming out with like consoles of various types. And uh, I believe that this is probably another one of those um, general instruments pong on a chip type of deal where the cartridge contains a pre-programmed microchip, etc. And they probably sold a selection of cartridges for this unit. We've looked at one similar to this. Uh, the cartridge size is different. Of course, this is a very large bay for a very large cartridge. And uh, you have a selection of, you know, 10 different games, same as the one we looked at before. Controller-wise, we have uh, a four-way stick, etc. This one's bent with a button down here at the bottom. Uh, probably intended people to hold it like this, I suppose. Uh, this isn't terrible as a design idea. I mean, they were getting close to what we were going to end up with for quite a while with the Atari joystick, but this wasn't it, but it was getting closer. Animex made a number of Pong systems, and I don't think they ever graduated out of Pong to a uh, programmable uh, console. It seems like very few companies that were making Pong systems at the time, uh, after that market sort of collapsed under Atari's weight, they wisely, I would say, decided to move on uh, from this market and just sell radios or TVs or something rather than try to get into what it was going to take to hire programmers and make video games. Uh, so, um, Hanamex, you know, spent the 70s making game systems for people. And this particular model, you had a steering wheel that you could get for it, played some of the racing games and such. You know, they had intended for it to be a little bit more built out and a little bit more fun, but, ah, whatever. You know, it, it, um, it's just a European, UK clone of uh, Pong, essentially. Now, I got one game for it. We'll go ahead and, you know, make sure it works and switch it over and everything and, and see, uh, see how it is. But ultimately, this is a variant of that same uh, type with a lot of these other systems. I don't generally collect variants, but because these use different cartridge types in terms of size, uh, you know, I, I picked this one up. It was relatively inexpensive. And the other thing is, is that, like, we'll look at this with the cassette vision, uh, if we haven't already hit that in this series. Now, cassette vision you know, was uh, the only one I know of that was a combo unit. It had the pong on a chip style cartridges just like uh, the Hanamex here but it also uh, utilized an NEC programmable ROM chip uh, so that they could make their own games and so that was like uh, one of the first programmable cartridges um, you know and it was the only one that was sort of a hybrid uh, coming out of what it was but anyway uh, yep yeah, let's switch over to the video side now I will say this uh, this is a PAL system. I'm going to try running it out uh, and into the encoder so we can look at it. It luckily does say on the back UHF channel 36. Thank you, Hanamex. And um, we'll try to run it through the encoder. If it doesn't work, I'll try to get it on the PAL TV and at least show you guys that it's working properly. Um, but uh, either way, I'll get you something here. Um, if I can't get a display out of it at all, then we won't count it as a console because it didn't work. Uh, but uh, here we go. I thought I'd show you guys something uh, about kind of how I mess with these things. Because <clears throat> each one of these videos seems like they're fairly short, but as a lot of these systems are so old and I end up having to tinker with them a lot, in order to try to get them to function. Now this is the Hanamex and uh, I wasn't able to get it to do much of anything and then uh, surprisingly after I don't know reseating the cartridge inside the case itself I was able to get uh, a bit of a display I will see if I can make that show up for you here I think I have to like 
reduce the the brightness. So you can kind of see the board there. I know there's tons of lines going through it. There's lots of interference. Okay, but you can kind of see that there's something there anyway, right? right. So. Yeah, there's not much else I can do about that. But it's not good. It's not it's not really playable in this sort of shape. It's a little bit too far over to the left. And, um, yeah, it's got a lot of fuzz. Now, you know, when looking inside these things, I don't know what everything is because I don't have schematics, nor uh, would I be able to do much if I did have one. But, um, you know, you have these sort of adjustable... Let me get this in focus... You have these adjustable things here, uh, but this seems to be color related. So this is the red, this is the blue, this is probably, you know, some sort of chroma or brilliance or something along those lines, right? Uh, so it doesn't really clean up the picture itself. And then uh, we have one um, pot over here that could be adjusted. doesn't seem to do anything. It may have to do with game speed. Uh, I've seen that in uh, a lot of these where you kind of can control the voltage a little bit to speed or slow the game down, etc. But it doesn't seem to clear the picture up at all. And then we have a little pot here. And let's see if I can get that focused in better. There we go. Uh, that um, has very little to do with picture. It can kind of help it from the horizontal rolling or vertical hold. Um, but not too much. It probably has some sort of control with this um, crystal here or something. Uh, but overall, it doesn't seem like I can clean it up too well. Now, here's your standard RF box. This is the RF jack that goes out to the um, tuner. And uh, this usually has like a hole too. And these things, these things are usually what the problem is, right? These things get old and crusty. I'm going to stop the camera for a sec. I'm going to pop this lid off and I'm going to show you what's inside. Okay, so here you can see that it's basically just uh, looks like a few capacitors and a couple resistors. Uh, and this little gobbledygook right here is kind of like some glue or something. They seem to like pour this whole glue down on the base of these things. Now there could be something on the flip side. But, you know, the minute you even take this RF shield off the top, uh, you, um, you get no picture output anymore at all. All that color and everything is gone. And, um, yeah, the, so this, th these are notorious, you know, for just, I don't know, just going bad or something. Um, and the thing is, is it's like, I think there's probably a way to um, bypass all this and run it out on a standard composite, you know, uh, rather than trying to do RF. And so it might be worthwhile modifying these things. I just don't have the skill to do it. So, you know, I, no one could, you could tell me what to solder together, but I just don't know off the top of my head how to even do something like that. And it's not easy to find instructions to do it, especially on something so old. Uh, you know, because there's a fair bit of junk in here controlling the color aspect of the RF. This is mostly just for the signal, I think, back here. And this is all just to handle the color and, and that kind of thing. So, you know, unfortunately, this one's just, you know, not going to make it. Uh, but I'm not going to throw it away because it, it seems like it's close. You know, it seems like it could be repaired. Uh, you know, it could have something done to it to make it more functional. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm not that guy. I don't know how to do it. But, um, yeah, anyway... It's just another one of those Pong on a chip type deals. You know, these cartridges have a AY38610 or something in them. Uh, they have these little TV tuner things here too that help with the picture, but they don't really do anything in this case. There's one on that side and there's one on this side as well. And, uh, sorry with the focus. And so, um, yeah, it's a bummer. Uh, they can't win them all, though, you know. Sometimes these things, um, especially like this real infant, early days technology where they're trying to get a color thing with microchips on a cartridge type of deal, and uh, they don't, you know, they just 
they don't last very long, etc. Um, but again, I, I think this one could be repaired. It's clean and everything. Just somebody would have to have a schematic and know what it is we need to do. Not me. Thanks for watching, though. We'll see you in the next video.